Hello chemists and welcome to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode we're going to look at how to calculate the number of moles present at equilibrium. I'm going to break it down looking at how to get the number of moles using an ice table and how we go from number of moles to calculating Kc. And then what to do if you're not given a volume in a question. Remember we always finish up the video with a summary section with the key points for your revision. And if you look below in the description you'll find all the different sections and links to other videos to help you understand this topic. This is AQA topic 1.6 equilibria and can appear on papers 1 and 2 of your final exams. In a previous video we've looked at the Kc expression and how we can calculate the value of Kc when given the concentrations present at equilibrium. In more complicated problems we might only know the starting concentrations or moles of the reactants and possibly one amount at equilibrium. This is where ice comes in. It's a simple way of remembering the steps we need to use to calculate the amounts of reactants and products at equilibrium. We'll start with the initial amount, we'll then look at the change, and then finally we'll be able to use that to calculate the equilibrium amounts. This is a common type of problem we might face in an exam. Here we're being told the number of moles of the reactants before the reaction starts, and then the moles of the product at equilibrium. We're not given any more values and we need to have a method for working out the different numbers of moles present at equilibrium. So we'll start off by looking at the reaction as a whole. We can see that we've increased the amount of H2, it's gone from 0 to 2 moles. If this happens, the moles of I2 and H2 will have gone down. And because the reaction coefficients show a ratio of 1 to 2, they'll have gone down by 1 mole each. We can use this idea to work out how many moles will be left at equilibrium. To give these calculations a bit more structure, we'll show them in an ice table. And we'll start off by filling the values that we know from the question. So we'll add in our starting moles of H2 and I2, along with no moles for HI. Then looking at the question, we can then add in an equilibrium number of moles for HI. Looking over the table, we can add in the changes. So we've gone up by two moles for HI, down by one mole for I2, and down by one mole for H2. We can use this value to then calculate the moles at equilibrium. Now this is a fairly simple example used to demonstrate this concept, but it will work with much more complicated examples. This is one of those more complicated examples, and it's more in line with what you might see in an exam question. It's asking you to calculate the value of Kc, but the values in the questions only give you the starting amounts before the equilibrium takes place, and one final value at equilibrium. So to start this question, we'll start off by building an ice table and adding in the values just like we did before. At equilibrium, 0.48 moles of NO have been formed, and we can clearly see that the change for NO is plus 0.48. And because NO and NO2 are on a 1 to 1 ratio, NO2 will have decreased by 0.48. For O2, the ratio to NO is 2 to 1, so we'll half the change. Once we have these changes, it's quite simple to work out the number of moles present at equilibrium. In the previous step, we calculated the number of moles present at equilibrium for each species in the reaction. As you remember, Kc uses concentrations, so we'll convert each of these values to concentration by dividing the number of moles by the volume. Once we have these concentrations, we can write out a Kc expression for the equilibrium. We'll then add the values in and calculate Kc, finally checking we have the right number of significant figures. I've looked at Kc calculations in more detail in a previous video, and I'll put the link in the description below. It is possible to be given a problem without a volume, and this is a fairly common exam trick. In this case, you start the question the same way with an ice expression. And this lets you calculate the number of moles of equilibrium, but it doesn't solve the issue of not having a volume. In the second step, what we'll do is look at a Kc expression for the equilibrium, and we can see that there's the same number of items on the top line as there is in the bottom. To make the rest of this calculation a bit simpler to follow, I'm going to use the letters A, B, C, and D for each of the reactants and products above. So if we replace the concentrations of each of the reactants with the number of moles divided by the volumes, you can see that the volume values on the top line cancel with those on the bottom line. This leaves you just with the number of moles of each species present at equilibrium. Now this only works when there's an equal number of items on the top and the bottom rows of the expression. So here are the final steps of the calculation, so you can solve it at home if you want to. In summary then, more complicated problems require you to calculate the number of moles present at equilibrium. To do this, we can use an ice table to calculate the amounts. Always watch out for the reaction coefficients when calculating. These are the numbers before each of the chemical equation and give you the ratios. Values in moles will need to be converted to concentrations before you can use them in a Kc expression. 
and sometimes volumes can be cancelled when there's an equal number of items on the top and the bottom row of the KC expression. Thanks chemists for watching this episode of Bales Chemistry. For more equilibrium videos, click up here. And if you haven't already, click down here to subscribe.